But what the wind industry doesn't want you to know is what the physical output of these wind turbines actually is. Do they perform like they claim they do? When I first heard about wind turbines producing 35% of their capacity on average, I knew immediately that something was not right. That they were, in fact, they were in fact lying to us. Just press the center button. No, the one on the right. The one on the right, he says. There we go. Does everybody know what this is? This is a bell curve. If I was to take the height of all the adults in this room, children stay out of this. If I was to take the height of all the adults in this room, you would follow approximately a bell curve. Half of you would be in the middle, the average. Half of you would be above the average, half of you would be below the average. This line here represents, it's a very important line, represents the standard deviation. Standard deviation just means where most of the values lie on that graph. The first standard deviation, which is with here, means that 64% of you will be normal people. <laughs> Two standard deviations, 94% of you will be normal people. And the abnormal people will be the ones that are above and below the second standard deviations. So when the wind turbine people say, oh, we produce, we have a capacity factor, which is what percent of the uh, capacity is, they'll say 35%. Everybody thinks of this. Oh, well, half of their output is above, and half of their output is below. Not true. In the real world, you almost never get a bell curve. You get some kind of skewed graph that looks like this. With human height, it actually flips the other way. There are very few very tall people, but there are some very, very short people. The important number on a skewed graph is the median, not the average. The median is the point where half the people are above the value, half the people are below the value. The more skewed the graph is, the less meaning average has. Anyone want to take a guess what the physical output of a wind turbine is? What a graph would look like? Any guesses? Nobody wants to guess. There it is. I downloaded the hourly output of every wind farm in Ontario from 2006 to the fall of 2010. So that's 365 days times four times the number of, it's a lot of data. I took every hourly output and I divided it by their capacity to get an hourly capacity factor. What a wind turbine does over the course of an entire year or what any power source does over the course of the year is completely irrelevant. The most important aspect of any uh, power output is what it does right now. Can it supply the demand right now? So over the year, it's meaningless. The closest we can get to right now is hourly. And that's what it looks like. This is for all wind power up until 2010 in the summertime only, the summer months. Notice this bar right here. That is zero output. Nothing at all. Dominates the graph. The median, which I said to you was where half the value line is, half the hours are below the median, half the hours are above, and the median is 7%. So that means in the summertime, Wind turbines are on it. Wind turbines, hour, the number of hours that they're spending is less than 7% of their ability half the time. And as you can see, the average is only 14%, but does it have any meaning? It has no meaning. So wind turbines really are pathetic as far as their ability to produce power. Of course, they talk about intermittent. Well, that's what intermittent wind power looks like. 
This is July 2010 every day until the 31st. That's the actual physical output from the entire fleet for that month, every hour. And you can see it's a series of spikes. Well, if you looked at a nuclear power plant output for the same thing, it'd be a flat line all the way across, constant power. So how can this have any viability to produce power for our needs? Now the claim, of course, is, oh, this, this is what one of those, those spikes looks like. As you can see, this is one day, the 20th of July, 21st, 22nd, there was no wind output at all, and then all of a sudden it spikes up, and then drops back down. So it only spikes up for 12, 14, 16 hours, and it's back down to no output at all. And somehow they have to put that into our grid. Now the claim is that wind power will replace coal. Well, let's see if that's possible. This black line is the coal output. It's, a, it's rated capacity. So in the daytime, you can see it's 90%. They ramp up the coal in the morning when the usage demand goes up. And then at night, the coal drops back down. That's why you see it dropping down here. The blue line is the wind. Now, anybody here tell me that that blue line can replace that black line? Absolutely not. It is not physically possible for wind to replace coal. Can't be done. The claim by the Ontario government was that they wanted 15% of Ontario's capacity to be produced to be produced by wind turbines. Okay, uh, how many wind turbines would that be? Now, the capacity, of course, is a meaningless number because they never produce capacity. So let's assume a generous 10% capacity. Using, it, and I'm, if I can remember, you could remind me, what, what year was it they made that commitment for the 30% or the 15%? I think it was like 2005 or something. Do you remember that? And yeah, anyway, I think that's when it was. In 2005, the Ontario government said, or ran around that date, that they wanted 15% of our wind, or 15% of our power produced by wind. So how many would that be? At 10% capacity, we would need 35,000 wind turbines. Okay, that's a big number. But what does it mean? I mean, can anybody actually visualize 35,000 wind turbines? How many have we got now, like 900 or something like that? At 500 meter distance between every one of them, the black square is what will be completely filled every 500 meters. Now I think most of us would prefer to go in the blue area. Because <laughs> that's how much space they would require. 35,000, now here, this is how, what 35,000 means. It's one every 100 meters along the 401 from Windsor to Montreal. Now that's an eight hour, nine hour drive. Some people can do it in eight. You would be passing, every time your odometer clicks, that 100 meters would be a wind turbine. You'd be doing that for nine hours. That's 35,000. Can it be done? Now we need a little bit of help. Yes, you, you come up. Why don't you stand on this line? It is far easier for me to show this. Face that way, please. It is far easier for me to show this than trying to explain this. I'm a wind developer. Barb is my target of 15%. Now the 15% was by 2030. The economy grows. 1%, 2%, whatever it is. So Barb is my target. I have to get to that 15% target by 2030, but she is going to move ahead of me as the years go on, start taking steps. One. So I'm building, but my target is moving away because the economy is growing, right? And now I'm at 2030, stop. Okay? 
I can't reach my target of 15%. That's the 35,000. I need to build more to make my target. But it gets better, much better. Anybody know how long a wind turbine survives? What its lifespan is? Take a guess. They claim it's 20 years. I've done that 20 years. Stand at the podium. Okay, we now have 35,000 wind turbines. But the ones that I built 20 years ago are starting to die. You're going to start building them. Now we start to walk. Okay, I'm building trying to catch up to my target. He's now got to replace the wind turbines that are dying that I made before. Now we're 40 years into the future. Okay? Guess what? His wind turbines now have to be replaced. Anybody else want to start down there? <laughs> you get the picture. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Thank you very much. This line, the blue line, represents economic growth at 1% for Ontario. The red line represents how fast the wind turbines would have to be built. Now, you don't just start building a thousand a year. You have to ramp up to that. It's called growth. All growth has a doubling period. The bottom line is the last few years of that wind turbine growth curve means we would have to build 15,000 of them in the last two or three years. Is that physically possible? No. Cannot be done. And here we have it. Okay? It's Suzuki bashing night, isn't it? <laughs> Certainly is. But I love this. It's free! <laughs> if it's free, how come the fifth amount is so high? Okay. So, if wind power was viable in its output, one can make an argument, maybe we should build it. But they don't. They cannot produce viable power. When they do produce power, we're giving it away to the states. And you're paying for it. If we had a need for the power, in other words, if we had a shortage of power in Ontario, one could argue that we need to build wind turbines. But we have an excess of power in Ontario, and we have had an excess of power in Ontario since 2005. The IASO expects that to continue for at least another 10 years. Excess power in Ontario. If wind turbines solve climate change because of CO2 emissions, which is false, one could make an argument. So we have three things that they are claiming about wind turbines, none of which are true. Hence, there is no viable reason to have wind turbines at all. None. Germany is finding that out. Great Britain is finding that out. And in 20 years' time, we're going to have one heck of a lot of monuments to our stupidity. Thank you.